This is the car that has everything the old Land Rover Defenders owners want. Good afternoon everyone, this is B-Boy Vargas for BBC Top Gear Philippines. I'm your the Associate Off-Road Editor and welcome to another review of one of the most awaited four-wheel drives in the market, the new Land Rover Defender 110. Not just the Defender 110, but the diesel-powered Defender 110, the car that will take you on great adventures because of its great fuel economy. So let's saddle up and uh, begin the review. The new Land Rover Defender 110, a very controversial vehicle, especially coming from me, who's had two old Defender 110s. But uh, we'll keep that out of the equation. Let's take the car for a drive and see what it really is. Okay, to begin with, the Fender is now with a diesel variant, a 2.4 liter, 240 horsepower turbocharged engine, very responsive. It now runs a mechanical all wheel drive system with a Unlike the old mechanical four-wheel drive system with a center differential lock, this is now all computer controlled. So it does the thinking for you on light to moderate trails, though you can mechanically engage it. One of the key elements of real off-road driving is um, ground clearance and traction. The Defender has a air suspension system that can raise it up to uh, heights that would be equivalent to a 35-inch um, tire on, and a 2-inch lift on the previous Defender. We actually tried lifting the car um, at its maximum height beside a old Defender with 36-inch tires. And at full lift, um, we were practically of the same height as the previous Defender. The previous Defender comes with a rigid solid axle on coil spring suspension. Now, like its um, Range Rover brethren, it's now with an independent suspension front and rear with airbags, which you can use to control the ride height of the vehicle. So here, here we are driving on corrugated um, Lahara Field, and uh, the ride is still quite comfortable. You'd expect it to be uh, bumpy, but it's not, considering that your suspension is a full extension. No? Going back to ground clearance and traction, no? this unit in particular doesn't come with a rear differential lock, which gives maximum traction. But for light to medium to a little hard traction conditions, uh, the car is smart enough to be able to manage getting traction on its own. It's practically like a point and shoot. And mind you, we didn't bother to air down the tires for improved traction. We just kept it on stock standard tire pressures, which is about 40 PSI. No? That's a little harsh, but you know, we are running 60 series, 65 series low profile tires on 20 inch rims. So the fear of unbidding the tire from the wheel can be uh, uh, avoided by just keeping the tire pressures up and leave the traction control system to keep the tires looking for grip on loose surfaces. Thank you. 
creature comforts. Okay. <laughs> Definitely, this is the car that has everything the old Land Rover Defenders owners want. Creature comforts, plenty of legroom, very, very efficient air conditioning system, which is practically not on the previous Defender. So, let's, um, let's treat it as it is. It's an entirely different vehicle. Now, the big question there would be, can it go off-road like the old Defender? Definitely, yes. It's actually more capable than the previous Defender. Although, I'm sure there will be issues about um, it being an independent suspension and all the electronics that goes with it. That would be people's apprehension on, on this vehicle. But so far, as far as we're concerned, it's pretty decent. Going back to ground clearance, people will say, well, that's just the size between the body and the, and the ground. Actually, there are several considerations. One of the considerations is the approach, breakover, and departure angle. And judging from the numbers, the defender, the new defender, is going to be quite hard to match. So we're talking about durability. One of the key elements that the defender, the previous defender, has been known for. Its rigid frame chassis has been stuff of legends. The actual monocoque frame of the new Defender is actually harder or stronger than the previous ladder frame chassis. Well, I'm not going to take it upon myself to find out. But it'll be the years of driving this the new Defender around in these conditions is what's going to dictate. But by the feel of it, it feels pretty rock solid. Now, according to the, the distributor, the Defender is capable of 900 millimeters of water wading depth. 900 millimeters, that's almost a meter of water. Can it run fast off-road? Yes, to, um, to moderate levels, yes. It should be able to go very fast off-road uh, without having to resort to tweaking of the engine because obviously it has all the grunt it needs with the new defender you don't have to be a hairy chested chest beating macho off-roader the car is practically point and shoot oh, it is so smart it will do anything you want it to do i guess that's what 84 ecus can do for you you just point and shoot and let the car do the thinking I've had several Land Rovers in my life, starting from a Series 3, the 1970 Series 3, some Discoveries, and a couple of Defenders. And they were all great cars. They were really suited for what they were going, they were meant to be doing, which is going out there in the great outdoors for adventure. And the, the new Defender 110 encompasses all of that. No? Only this time it gives us the comfort, the convenience of a Land Rover owner wants from their previous Land Rovers. And more importantly, it's extremely safe. No more exposed metal parts, full safety features. It's the kind of family adventure tourer you would want to go in and still have this, um, the spirit of adventure in it. I'm B-Boy Vargas for BBC Top Gear Philippines. Have a good day.